Hi everyone and welcome to the vlog. I'm on my way to Chiang Mai in Betty Blue. I'm going to be introducing you guys to a good friend of mine. His name is Roddy Lorimer. He is the former trumpet player for The Who, The Rolling Stones and Eric Clapton. A lot of the music that you're going to hear in the vlog, including this right now, is actually Roddy. So enjoy. trip that Betty Blue has ever done. It's uh, it's a hell of a trip actually. It's 14, 16 hours plus. Uh, but I'm going to be making a lot of stops along the way. I'm going to stop at some random campsites. Um, I'm going to be stopping in Chiang Mai. I'm going to show you some things there and uh, bumping into some interesting folks as well. So thanks for coming along for the journey. It's a beautiful day, beautiful time to travel. We got some rooms. Looks like people have not been here for a long time. But Lotbury is not really a, a tourist area anyway. It's a local area, so they would only really have our local customers. Let's go and see. ห้องพัดลมใช่ไหมครับเอ้ใช่ไหมขอดูหน่อยได้ไหมครับเคลื่อนทาร์ดไรครับ450ครับฮ่าฮ่าโอเคเอด้วยโอเคดีแล้วครับอุ้ยทำยังไงครับโอ้นี่เหรอเออเจ็บไหมby Lang. Looks like they once had parties here, but not for a while yet. Yeah, definitely a peaceful spot here in Lopbury. It's the nicest place I've ever stayed, to be honest. It's quite dark and dingy. And you know when you've got aircon in the room, you're tempted to use it, and we don't have aircon on the farm. And now I feel all kind of stuffy and clogged up. It's time for coffee, and I've got now seven hours to Chiang Mai. Okay, so a quick pit stop to get another full tank of B-Jet. This petrol station looks like one of those petrol stations where you kind of pull over and it's run by hillbillies and that you kind of may just get murdered in. It's, it reminds me of a petrol station from an old 70s horror movie. Nice woman, just off camera there, she said, um, pump gao gao kun ge ge. That means um, this is an old petrol station and I'm an old lady. Uh, very nice. I just, for some reason, my camera stopped recording. It's, uh, it's always a shame. Some of the best footage that I get on these trips, um, I, I lose because the battery runs out or the storage gets full. Or, um, I think I may have to upgrade. Uh, to a, a bigger memory size. But yeah, I survived this old petrol station. Uh, no, no serial killers, no Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
So it's time for, time for some John Denver and on with the rest of the trip. I have another six hours to go. So if you decide to travel Thailand for any length of time, it's important to remember not to die in the first couple months and years. And uh, I'm not even joking. So many stories here of being on the motorbike, no helmet, getting a bit excited, having a few Leos, and then you die. I've had friends die this way in very, very tragic circumstances. Going out on the waterfall is another one. Um, and maybe having a few Leos, even not having a few Leos, just getting a bit excited again, slipping off the top of the waterfall, being in a traffic accident, uh, drinking too much and you know falling asleep on a beach, getting into fights with uh, local gangs. It really is difficult for the first year to actually stay alive. Um, but once you get through it, um, get through the first year or two like that, you become a little bit more calmer, a little bit more uh, sensible. So I remember in my drinking days, there's always some, some trouble, there's always something going on, some drama. And to be honest, a lot of it was revolving around uh, alcohol. Uh, when you're alcohol free, a lot of that drama kind of just goes away. But so does a lot of the fun and excitement too. You kind of have to fun, find fun and excitement in a different way. So that's my top tip for you. Uh, if you are going to come to Thailand long term, try not to die. Considering last night's hotel was not very comfortable, I've decided today to come to the Riverside Lodge. It's going to be a bit more comfortable for tonight. It's just too hot to stay in the car unless I'm on a, on a professional campsite. So this place looks really nice though. So the cost per night here is usually 1,460 baht, but I got a last minute deal and uh, it was 1,000 baht. So not expensive for a, a nice location. Very quiet though, because I think no customers. guys it's been a long drive today so I'm gonna get some Thai food and then hit the hay tomorrow I'm gonna to show a little bit of this place it's a nice place I'm gonna go first through in the pool and then I'm gonna meet up with my good friend Roddy Lorimer in Chiang Mai have a chat with me. You're right, it's been a long time mate. Yeah, I mean we're all friends, um, many years now, many many years, lost yeah. count. Used to play together at my old uh, yeah. lounge and um, you know there's so much to your history that I couldn't fit it into this little three minute segment. So I, I was thinking about some questions along the way that I wanted to ask you. Um, but you've had quite a colourful career, you've played with yeah. a lot of 
um, interesting characters, Eric Clapton, Beyonce, all these guys. And I wanted to ask you, what was the most kind of peak of, of your career <clears throat> playing trumpet? It has to be playing with Pete Townsend, my hero, you know, uh, I am such a fan and as a musician uh, I'm also such a fan because I don't know anyone that's more talented and more intelligent uh, inside or outside music than Pete Townsend, he's yeah. that incredible a man and to play with him and then subsequent, you know, that, that was like 1985, 1986, I played with his band and we, we did an album, we did a movie and then in 89 I toured with The Who, which was my band that <laughs> I had grown up with, they were my heroes and for the first, um, it was six weeks of rehearsals booked in West London and for the first four weeks, none of the Who turned up. <laughs> it was just the backing band mm. going through all these songs, all of these songs. And then one day out of the blue, the three of them, the three surviving members turned up. And it was like, Whoa. I mean, I'd never met Dolphy or Entwistle before. I knew Pete, obviously. <laughs> um, and the first song they did, I wasn't playing on. It was See Me, Feel Me. <coughs> but See Me, Feel Me. What do you do? See me, feel me. Hairs in the back standing up. No, that was just an incredible feeling. And it's just encapsulated in that moment. And I've often stopped in my life and said, don't forget this moment and how it feels. Mm. Because it's too easy to be blasé about it. You know, you do get to do all these amazing things and play in these amazing places with amazing people. But anything can become ordinary. It's, it's, it's having the presence of mind to say, stop, think about this moment. Mm. You know, I remember uh, staying in a hotel in New York and we were going to play Giant Stadium in New Jersey for the third night in a row. And I was like feeling a bit down and a bit sort of, oh, picked up my trumpet and you know walking out and that room had a wall that was just all mirror and I saw myself and I went whoa stop <laughs> this is what you've dreamed about all of your life you would have given your arm to be here about to do this remember how special it is mm -hmm. remember what a privilege it is to do this and don't forget it so you should always take some times in your life just to stop and think about what you have, what you've been given, because it's too easy just to accept it. Anything can become normal. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything that um, you know your average viewer of this channel perhaps may know, a recording or yeah. some, something that you've recorded where you're playing the trumpet where they can, they can listen? So much, and it depends, you know, everybody's got their own taste and their own style so not necessarily something which would appeal to me would appeal to you yeah you know and it's like that uh, and so it could be anything from the Spice Girls or Boy Zone or Blur yeah. you know all of these things a lot of them have got trumpet solos in them yeah. you know Universal by Blur it's, yeah, wonderful, one of the best videos, uh, almost a uh, clockwork orange, almost in style yeah. the video. It's worth watching YouTube blur the universal just for that. I'll link that in the description. But you'll hear the trumpet is the background, a kind of Burt Bacharach makes blur. Yeah. Because uh, the trumpet was done there, I, I decided to do it in the style that, that Burt Bacharach made famous for trumpet, uh, and so that's that's one you, you, could, you know that oh, it's yeah. easily available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At KTL Records, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you've ended up. I mean, obviously, I vlog about this beautiful country, the yeah. people, the culture, um, different lifestyles, different. In, characters that are here there's a, a definitely a mixed bunch right uh you ended up in thailand like why after such a jet-setting lifestyle mm -hmm. of seeing the world and and touring why Excuse here me. 
Well, actually, yeah, I didn't choose Thailand. I chose, I, I, I decided that the old story, divorce and, you know, I just didn't want to be living in the UK any longer. But actually my chosen country to move to was Egypt. Oh really? I was going to go to <laughs> Egypt and study Egyptology. Uh, not that I have a great knowledge of Egyptology, that's why I was going there because it really interested me and I wanted to do it. And I was out playing golf at my local golf course, uh, club should I say, because I was a member there. And the secretary, who was an ex-civil servant, uh, civil service Mandarin, right? that's the, the very, very, very talk you get, said, why are you going to Egypt? I said, well, I, I love the country. And I love it. He, said, he said, look, I'm going to Pattaya for six weeks. Come with me there. Yeah. I, said, I said, where's Pattaya? <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's in Thailand. I went, oh, right, okay. He said, come with me for six weeks. And if you don't like it, piss off to Egypt. I said, okay. <laughs> and that's how I ended up in time. You just stay. It was just, yeah, after six weeks I was in love, so. I think you chose right. Yeah, well, <laughs> well subsequently Egypt's gone through so much turmoil. Yes, yeah, since then. It's Tha coming, Thailand has, but not quite so violent. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and you have a little daughter here and, and, and family here now, and do you think this is where you're going to stay? I mean, what do you love about it? What, what, why do you stay? Well, one, well, the obvious reason is my daughter. I mean, that's uh, I do take my responsibilities seriously. So, you know, I've got a daughter to bring up as a single dad. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. But the other thing is, I couldn't go back to the cold again. <laughs> I hate the cold with a vengeance. Yeah. I can take really. I mean, this week we're going to have a really, really. It's going to be 40 or 40 plus this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. I can deal with that. But the idea, be, being being a smoker, the idea of going back to the UK and putting on a jumper <laughs> and a coat and a hat to go outside for a cigarette, no. <laughs> I'm never again, you know. Yeah. So, no, there's, that's... And also, parts of my body would seize up. You know, it's, it's, it's a sort of minor, major thing that people don't realise. In the UK, I used to get arthritis in my knees. Mm. And I was finding it difficult to actually walk about. Here, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I think I hear, I hear that a lot, you know. Yeah. So it's a, the weather is one of the key choices of, of coming here. And, um, you know, back to our playing days as well, I want to thank yeah. you. Because as somebody that never had any formal learning in saxophone at all, um, I do remember, although it's quite hazy because they were my drinking days, uh, I do remember you used to kick my ass when it was when it came to playing the saxophone. If it was if I was ever too drunk or, yeah. or unable to hit the notes, you always did uh, push me to practice and, and kick my ass then. And I think it, 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 you know I'm still an amateur saxophone player, but but it's certainly improved me uh, over the years. It's something I've consciously or unconsciously I do, I couldn't help myself anyway. If people have got ability and they're not using it. I will, I will bug them. I will get at them and make them do it. And I do it with musicians. You know, the guys here will tell you. Or the guys in 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 Wahim would say the same. Uh, <coughs> that to do a rehearsal with me, taking the rehearsal means you've got to work hard. Yeah. And everything is structured in such a way that that makes sense. And if, and if, if I'm trying to talk and someone starts playing something. They get that look that kills, <laughs> and if you stop playing, you know, if I'm speaking, please do me the honour of listening to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll do that on stage with professionals as well. And uh, uh, People can resent it, but most of the time people have said to me, thank you. Yeah. You have actually made me a better player or, or made me think more about what I'm doing. Not just necessarily technically what I'm doing, but how I'm approaching it, you know, because you've taught me how to approach a rehearsal. You know, our great friend Tor, uh, yeah. oh, I love that guy's guitar playing. But he said to me one day that when we were in the saxophone lounge, he said, Coon Roddy, why do you call it uh, rehearsal or 
and we call it practice. I said, because they're two different things. I said, no, they're the same. I said, no, they're not. I said, practice is what you do at home. Mm -hmm. So you then come into the room with me and rehearse, <laughs> because that's all we're doing is polishing the stuff. Mm -hmm. Not learning the stuff. You do that at home. That's your practice. Yeah. So that you don't come here to practice. Not in not in my rehearsals. You come here to actually finish it and polish it and talk about could we change this in some way to make it better or yeah. you know, whatever. But that's what that's for. So yes, they are two completely different things. <laughs> and now you've recently uh, announced your retirement. Yeah. From music. So that's it. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, we could. It would have been nice to do a jam, but uh, I have my saxophone with me. But uh, Roddy has kindly said I can use some of his music yeah. um, in in the vlog. And so, if you don't want to listen to the Water Boys all the moon, you can listen to some of this yeah. stuff, which not many people have heard before. It's going to be in the background of some of the yeah. vlogs, right? Well, if if you choose to. Use oh, I will. I've listened to some of it on SoundCloud, so I love it. So it's great for me. I've got. Uh, just don't come back a couple of years later and sue me for copyright. <laughs> well, the, the thing about writing music for me is it's a hobby, very much a hobby. It's not my job. My job is playing trumpet. My hobby is writing music. And unlike my job, I never treated it that seriously. That doesn't mean that I didn't give a lot of time to it, a lot of thought to it. But I, I never learned how to engineer properly. You know, I, I could have gone into it, but that technical stuff bores me. I just, I just don't want to know. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is write the music, and so what I have ended up with is 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 sketches. None of them, I suppose, are finished articles because they haven't been engineered mm -hmm. by an engineer. So the 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 are. The guys that use limiters and compressors and things like that will bring out certain things in the song because and and make more volume out of the song, mm -hmm. you know, which we tend to take for granted. The fact that everything is loud, yeah, you know, and that's compression. I know what it does. I just don't know how to bloody use it. <laughs> <laughs> so my stuff are just mixed by ear into a balance of what I can hear. And, and and obviously there's some reverb on vocals and things like that, or solo instruments, but the rest of it, no, it's not got anything, it's just it's just a mix and panning mm -hmm. as I hear it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all. I think you'll like it, I, I listen to it, I, think, yeah. Yeah, I know that a lot of the viewers, they appreciate the music used on the vlog. But uh, Roddy, thanks for doing this, you know, thanks for being a teacher and more so a friend over the years, and I appreciate it. Well, lovely. it's lovely to see you, and thank you, God you travelled all this way up to the wilds of China. <laughs> and on to pie next. And on to pie. Yeah. But you've got a few roads to, to travel, yeah, mate, and a few, yeah. a few pens to go around. <laughs> If this is the end, I'd like to go with a smile on my face. Don't shed a tear by my son's several beers, regale him of happier days. I've not gone to sleep, it's a state that's more deep. I'll take my regrets to the land. And when I'm gone, let the fun carry on. My spirit still plays with the band. And so, for now, I'll inhabit the space between the bars, that's how, somehow, I'll still be around when a trumpet is playing somewhere in the air. It could be just that anywhere, I'm still with you everywhere. If this is the end, I'd like to go with a smile on my face. Don't shed a tear by my son's several beers, regale him of happier days. So Roddy and I spent the rest of the afternoon in a beautiful spot where he took me for afternoon tea right by the river. It was great to catch up with an old friend 
And it was really important to me that I got our friendship in the vlog because as many of you know, I do this vlog uh, for when I'm gone and my son can watch it and I cut class Roddy as a, an integral part of my story. So it was nice to fit it in. And next we're on to Pi. So do stay tuned and lots more interesting people to meet along the way. I dreamed as a kid I'd like to please tell you just how I appreciate all the people so great To one and all I now take a bow To you and you bid my fondest adieu But don't you dare cry cause I'm leaving So now I'm gone let the fun carry on I laugh and still joke with you and my spirit still plays with the band 